अरे ये दोनों नहीं देख रहे अनिल और आदि दोनों अर्जुन करण अर्जुन की तरह बैठे हैं राकेश यू केम कैमरा यू ऑफ आई वुड लव टू सी यू यार प्लीज आ जाओ आई मीन वी लव टू सी मोर फेसेस कमिंग guys have pushed the media uh, the town hall to monday because most yeah. of them are on leave Correct. So shifted same time to Monday. Rajesh would have sent you guys a removal of yeah, the banner. Yeah. Right. Okay. आज देख रहा है brand shift के बारे में कौन-कौन सीखने आ रहे हैं? Mute पे तो. Everyone आ जाए मेरा. Good to see. No pressure आ जाए. Nothing bro. <laughs> we can start ajay we have a good audience and i think people would be joining we are 30 we are good so we can start okay uh, uh ajay i don't know uh, apart from our team we really know you well but if you could do a quick introduction about yourself also so it will help the larger team also know okay yeah so uh, very good uh, very good afternoon everyone so uh, i am ajay i am working as a senior manager here from past 4 years for intel uh and i lead the digital operations for all the verticals uh, intel vertical ccg dci and the retail campaigns so uh and also i would like to thank mega uh, first for this opportunity uh and I, i mean i will have to share this knowledge with the each and every one of us it's a uh, it's it's a good opportunity to share with everyone here so uh first of all i would like to know uh, how many of you know what does uh, brand safety or the ad verification tools do anyone so we understand that it's important uh, apart from intel team i i can take a stab at it um my understanding is that it's important for brands to be aware of the context in which the advertising happens and we yeah. should be aware that we don't want to associate with certain uh, words or actions or certain news items sometimes or certain type of uh, content so these need to be properly uh, understood and measures need to be put in place to ensure that a brand does not get associated in its advertising or its uh, any, any communication with certain uh, you know types of content or news or activities and that's what i think brand safety means broadly okay thank you so much amka anyone else venkatesh you were saying something yeah yeah this is adil or my qualified here venkatesh yes mega yeah so basically brand safety like means to make sure uh, your campaign your impressions are getting served into brand safe environment to keep us protected from like bots and other things uh, basically it's an un unsafe brand yeah okay so considering we have the offline team in this forum i would like to explain this topic from the scratch so well we receive a brief uh, let me explain you uh, what all we do on day to day basis uh, accordingly we will uh, take up uh, how the brand safety or the ad verification tool uh, works for us so well we receive the brief from the client and we will spend a lot of uh, time to uh, prepare a strategy out of it and it and we will work on the creators and all it all the communications finally we will take the campaign live so we do lot of exercises uh, at the back end to make the campaign success and uh, and we measure the campaign success by just looking if the uh, planned impression or the clicks or the kpis are met 
or the uh, respective KPIs uh, given by the uh, client are met or not. So we should not do only, uh, we should not look at only the impression or the clicks. We will we'll also have to, along with the KPIs and impression and clicks and all the uh, KPIs, whatever we got it from the client, we also need to look if the if our ads are properly uh, being viewed by the consumers without any ad fraud or and with the brand safe. Uh, to measure all these things, we have a ad verification tools in the market. Uh, by using this ad verification tools, we can um, we can uh, uh, we can measure how the campaign is uh, viewed and uh, what are its brand safe and how the uh, and we need to ensure that the our ads are not fraud. So let me share my screen and uh, explain it to you in detail. Let me know once you see my screen. Oh, yes, sir, it's visible. Thank you. Yeah, so the importance of the brand safety, like I said, uh, there are multiple ad verification uh, tools in the market, like uh, Integral Ad Science Mode, which is uh, acquired by the uh, Oracle and Chuck, Double Verify, White Ops, and the Pixelate and Confront. So uh, in India, most commonly used ad verification tool is uh, Integral Ad Science and the Mode here. So uh, in Intel, we do use in, uh, IAS and I, the same functionality and the methodology we, uh, which we are using it for uh, Intel, it goes for all the ad verification tool here. So let me start with uh, IAS. Why do we need verification of the campaign? In, in, uh, in spite of uh, ensuring that our uh, branch uh, met the KPI, uh, met the KPIs and we got the impression clicks everything but still we need to do a verification uh, whether the campaign ha has got the proper viewability and the ad fraud and the brand safe uh, uh, viewability ad fraud and the brand safe <laughs> so let me take you through uh, one by one so what is viewability you can hear me right Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you are audible. Okay. Yes, yes. So uh, let me take you through uh, one by one. These are the three uh, important metrics which we need to uh, make sure that the campaign is has the proper viewability app uh, without any ad fraud and the brand safety here. So let me start with the viewability first. So what is viewability? Viewability is the ability for a digital ad to be seen by an actual consumer. Uh, like to be considered the 100% view, uh, viewability, there are certain uh, guidelines set by the industry so that uh, the proper viewability will be uh, tracked by the IAS or any ad verification tools. So let me take you through what are the industry guidelines uh, that, uh, that the IAS will track for the uh, viewability. So like we run the campaign on multiple devices like tab, uh, mobile, uh, uh, laptop and uh, desktop. So there are, as I said, uh, there are certain guidelines to track the viewability. Like for the video, 50% uh, of the ad placement uh, in view for at least two seconds, two continuous seconds, then uh, it is considered as uh, the, the proper viewability has been uh, tracked for the video placements. Like for the display, at least 50% of the ad slot, like the proper ad slot uh, in view for at least one continuous seconds and for the large formats uh, at least 30 seconds of the creative uh, which means the ad slot uh, in the view for at least one continuous seconds so these are all the uh, uh, basic guidelines uh, to track the viewability for each and every uh, for device format which we run the campaign so i have a question here uh, does anyone know what is ad stacking Uh, yes, Ajay. Ad stacking is basically it's a kind of ad fraud, from what I know, in which ads are stacked in a single placement. The layers of ads is created to so. single ad slot. Yeah, yeah, that's good, uh, Vinkesh. So, 
so let me take you through uh, this. A lot can happen uh, between the ad is fetching from an ad server to and display an ad on the website. So however, even after the ad is loaded, uh, there are uh, multiple elements like uh, environment, uh, environment and the consumer elements that interfere uh, to um, make a make an impact of the visibility of an ad. So let me take you through what are the, why would uh, why won't we get why we are not getting the proper viability even after running with the uh, premium websites. Like, like I said, there are two criteria, uh, two elements like environment and the consumer. Let me start with the environment first. So there are four points. Uh, like uh, once the uh, if the ad is uh, loaded and out, uh, ad is loaded out. I mean, ad loads in an area outside the consumers uh, or else we can also call it as an uh, out of page ad unit. At that point of time, the viability cannot be tracked and the IS won't, uh, won't be tracking the uh, out of page ad unit like 125 cross 600, which comes on left hand side and the right hand side of the pay website. That won't be tracked by the IS or any ad verification tools because that is outside the website. So uh, like Venkta said, uh, uh, this is the second point like ad stacking like example if we have the ad slot uh, 300 cross 250 if the if in the same placement or the ad slot uh, if multiple ads are stuffed in it then IAS will track that there are few publishers uh, like they want to consume the impressions and they want to make us happy uh, they want to make us happy by giving uh, good impressions and over delivering the campaign so they uh, they do uh, such things to avoid such things we have the uh, ad verification tools and uh, this is the ad stacking in one particular placements multiple uh, ads are uh, stuffed at this point of time uh, we won't be getting uh, is will track this and uh, there won't be a uh, viability uh, from this campaign and uh, anyone know what is pixel stuffing I don't know. I mean, okay. for the rest, if it's overwhelming, please stop because uh, there's a lot of uh, technical information. So ask questions if you feel stuck anywhere or you feel you've not understood anything. So, uh, Ajay, like, I'll uh, try asking you questions so that people, uh, uh, if they have uh, more questions, they can pitch in. So, from a viewability perspective, which are the platforms which have uh, max uh, viewability, uh, both uh, whether it's biddable or whether uh, it's a video platform. Which are the platforms which have the highest uh, visibility and uh, viewability? And where do you see viewability uh, being a concern area from uh, which all platforms that you see from your experience? Yeah, Mega. Like I said, this ad verification tools like IAS, uh, to track all those things, we use this ad verif uh, uh, IAS pixels you know, with the uh, biddable or the social platform or the direct buy campaigns. So uh, it helps us to analyze the campaign. And uh, like I said, uh, the, ca the campaign success, we cannot measure the campaign success only with the uh, impression or clicks or the KPI. We'll have to also see whether we are getting the proper viability. So like I said, these are the uh, industry guidelines to track the viability. Hope I answered. So can I ask a very basic question here? Uh, when you say at least 30% of the creative is in view for at least one continuous second, uh, where is the rest of the 70% going? Outside the outside the browser? That example which you gave? No, 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 no. See, uh, a, a user will, uh, keep, uh, will keep on scrolling uh, the website and the 30% hmm. of the ad slot, it's not the creative, the ad slot, if the 30% of the creative is viewed, uh, that, that's the industry guideline. Uh, if the 30% the of the uh, creative is viewed, then the viability can be considered. If it is not, if it is lesser than the 30%, then uh, uh, we cannot track that. Uh, I mean, we cannot consider that uh, that as a 100% viability. So uh, 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 just uh, if I may pitch in here, Ajay. So Amita, yeah. when, in, when your page loads, like most of the ads will also load along with the content. When you <laughs> keep scrolling down, so most of the ads will be in the down. So if you see that, like, you know, I'll take an example of Times of India. I'll share my screen. So 
see here in this page this ad is only visible till here right. so uh, though it has been loaded it's not completely viewable so when you come uh, take it up it's 100% viewable for any tools to consider at least 30% of this should be on your screen so then only it will be considered as a viewable uh, viewable Viability. impression understood understood okay okay so when Thank it you. is not viewed when you're saying this example uh, that only 30% so the publisher doesn't charge you for this or how does that go so there are you certain benchmarks for ads? no uh, there are certain benchmarks for each and every metric like viewability ad fraud and brand safety so and we will be sharing it with the publishers as well uh, the proper uh, industry wide benchmark is 60 to 62% so if it is across the campaign or the campaign duration if we have more than 60% then it's a good viability okay got it So, uh, shall I continue, Mega? Ajay, just one more piece. This uh, guidelines that you talked about, whether it is 50% and 30%, etc. cetera, it may sound on, off, ka bhi, there is a fundamental, right? Mute pe hai, ya unmuted hai. Is there some guideline on that as well? No, uh, no, Anita. Uh, so, this is, uh, if you are talking about the video part, so continuous two seconds, I mean the 50% of the ad slot, uh, like example, uh, an OTT platform. If you are considering OTT platform, uh, even if it is mute uh, IS or the any um, ad verification that doesn't uh, track if it is in mute or unmute. It's just that the ad placement should be viewed uh, continuous for two seconds with a 50% view. I'm just stating this upfront, but guys, because MRSC has just standards here and there are agencies, for example, I do remember Group M had pulled out a point of view saying we should be changing the standards because for them, uh, mute and unmute uh, should have a different weightage and just doing a two second or a one second or above the fold, below the fold. There were certain perspectives and point of views of agency brands uh, that they had asked for saying what should what according to you should be the standard and while group m had put out their point of view i don't think it got recognized as an industry standard and we are still going ahead with i'm assuming uh, what ajay is sharing right now which is the sound part is still not being okayed by the uh, you know the the ias of the modes of the world it still talks about saying only viewable and not necessarily on the sound part of it Carry on, Ajay. Yeah, thank you, Anita. So, uh, coming to pixel stuffing, uh, like there is one more, uh, uh, like the uh, what? Let me explain you what is pixel stuffing. Uh, the pixel stuffing happens when one or more ad uh, within the ad slot. And example, let's say 400 cross 60 is an ad size, which will be uh, compressed with one cross one pixel and they will be placing it here. Oh, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, so if uh, they are uh, placing that one cross one pixel and uh, every time a user or a visitor visits the page, the impression gets tracked. So this is also one of the uh, fraud or the uh, viewable. Uh, th this do most of the publishers do like uh, not premium websites, but the other publishers uh, do such things. So all these things, it uh, IAS will track, and uh, we can ask them to optimize the campaign, and uh, we can catch hold of them by uh, seeing uh, by reading the report uh, through IAS. And the last point is okay, just uh, a question when you're talking about the stuffing of ads that happen, which is one on top of the other. Does that rotate regularly? For example, if Ajay is seeing it, he's seeing ad number one on top and Anita sees ad number three on top and Mega sees ad number two in the ad stuffing or it remains in the same order in which it is stacked up. 
no it is it remains in the same order like uh, this po this part like uh, 400 cross uh, 60 is the add add slot here so uh, one of the add uh, one of the other rat sizes uh, they will compress it to 1 cross 1 pixel and they will place it at the bottom any of the any corner of the add slot at that point Ji of time sorry sorry Ajay. just to uh, add to it sorry Ajay. yeah uh, anita so it happens it's that like only one creative will be there any of the advertiser but uh, most of the ad, ad networks, what they do is they will, whatever the campaign they get, some uh, five, six advertisers, cup pixel, they will put it there. But the uh, creative would be only one. So they may not have uh, showed our ad at all. But still, uh, our report shows that uh, we have served impression. Yeah. Okay. So that, the, that is the biggest uh, concern here. It, it is an invisible ad for a user, but uh, still the impression will get tracked and uh, we will get more uh, impressions in the report. So this is also one kind of a fraud, uh, which which IS will track. Clear. Yeah. So coming have, to the uh, sorry, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. If you want me to ask later? I'll ask later. So uh, coming to the consumer interaction, uh, this is a uh, I think this is a basic one. Uh, like uh, if a user. Uh, uh, redirects to the other page uh, before the ad is loading or uh, like I said, the minimum guidelines uh, like one, sec one continuous second should be met. At that point of time, uh, the viewability can't be tracked. And if I the other point is uh, if a uh, user minimizes the browser, uh, at that point of time also the ad won't be viewed. And uh, I mean, uh, the uh, viewability cannot be tracked. So these are all the few uh, elements uh, which IAS will track and uh, we will get the proper viewability uh, of the campaign as an overall. If we have got more than 60%, then it's a very good uh, viewability across the campaign and we can have this viewability, uh, we can have this data and we can uh, start planning for the uh, further quarter, uh, further quarter as well, further plans. I think uh, Ajay Venkatesh had this question that uh, is there a benchmark of mobility and that we should try to maintain? So, are you saying 60% is the number 60, that we should try to 60% is the industry wide? In Intel, we uh, maintain six, more, it should be more than 62%. So uh, coming to the ad fraud, uh, so this is the one of, uh, after viewability, uh, we will mainly look at uh, how the ads are being, uh, uh, not being fraud and uh, and I will show you the criteria. Uh, so what exactly ad fraud does? There are certain criteria like uh, if, uh, if you are uh, selling, if a publisher selling the inventory automatically generated by the bots and you know uh, how the bot works or the background apps, so, uh, like uh, for the other example, like we have a Bizwin uh, publisher. If I if I want to give an example, uh, we have a Bizwin publisher, and uh, they are run uh, as a direct buy. Uh, we want to run our campaigns with the Bizwin uh, publisher, but unfortunately, they run the campaign on the other websites which they are integrated uh, with. So at that point of time, uh, IAS will track and uh, while setting up the campaign, we do mention uh, whatever the um, media partners, we do set up the campaign and mention uh, our act should run on the particular domain itself. So this things also, uh, it will get tracked. And uh, the one more example is, uh, some publishers will deliver the uh, pre-roll video placements so that we will uh, so that they will get the uh, huge inventory and uh, they will get a uh, much more reach than the planned. So at that point of time, pe uh, publisher some publishers will uh, deliver the pre-roll placements on the display banner uh, slots as well. And uh, yeah, hiding ads uh, behind or the uh, on the other uh, page elements. Uh, that cannot be viewed that is also one kind of an ad fraud and uh, continuously refreshing the web page so that we, uh, we get the more more and more impressions that is also uh, one of the ad fraud so the most form of ad fraud uh, ad fraud is uh, the bots and the domains uh, the domains uh, spoofing so like uh, bots we know that uh, it's a software application that auto, uh, that automates the task 
with an uh, internet uh, which imitates the uh, human behavior and domain spoofing uh, which is uh, which occurs in a real time bidding like uh, whenever the programmatic stuff is happening and uh, the real time bidding in the real time bidding environment where the actual url to be used uh, but uh, the url uh, is used to fool an agency or an ad advertiser by uh, in i mean uh, into that uh, ad is going to a pre premium website but un unfortunately it is going to a some low quality website so that is also one kind of an uh, ad fraud which is called as domain spoofing uh, that is will track and if it is uh, if if our ads are uh, uh, running on uh, unsafe or the low quality websites the is will track and uh, we can uh, uh, we can make an optimization to the campaign uh, so okay, there's two the... things uh, two things here uh, when a website starts showing bots or there is you feel there is movement uh, specific how do you get to know from the dashboard uh, does it come as a notification or uh, how does no, it we do um, uh, we do a regular check i mean on day to day basis we uh, uh, we see how the uh, campaign is performing and we do monitor the campaign if it is uh, like like i said it comes this criteria comes under invalid rate uh, if the invalid uh, it should uh, the benchmark for invalid rate as an industry wide is 0 0.63 but uh, in intel we uh, do it should be lesser than 1% if it is uh, like we said uh, like I said, if I uh, start monitoring the campaign, if it is going beyond the one percent, then I will go and uh, generate the report and uh, get get things. I mean, I, I will read the report uh, from where the uh, ad fraud is coming in, whether from the bots or whether from the domain spoofing, and uh, whether the ads are getting hidden. Uh, you know, all these things we will get it in the IS dashboard. Through that, we will get to know uh, how the ads are running. And uh, we can ask publishers to uh, optimize the campaign accordingly. But if you please, but also it is not possible to show an example of how this happens and uh, how you recognize uh, it. Uh, 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 yeah. Also, Ajay, I have a question. This is not automated in IS. I know you do a regular job of going and checking every day, but is it not automated? Like, will it not push a notification? Ki bhai, tumhara, uh, it don't uh, push a notification, but uh, I I do a get uh, I should I do schedule a report on day to day basis, and yeah. if if I want to get a uh, more data on it, I will directly go to the dashboard and check if the campaign is running good or not. Matlab, check padega, there is no option to go. There. No, no. Yeah, there, sorry, sorry. So there are like in two ways, like you know, uh, just add to what uh, they are saying. There are two ways. Most of it, what we do is we track. When we are tracking, we are not actually serving the creative in an ad server. So uh, IAS will not have capability to block anything. But if we serve it, so which will cost us little uh, additional than what we are paying for DCM. If we serve it, IAS will have option uh, ability to block it. If there is any ad fraud or if there is any brand and unsafe environment where it is running, it, it will block and our uh, ad will not be displayed at all. So uh, for that, I can put you, Anil, because this is what my question. Even to Ajay was long time back also. Ki, जैसे हमें Intel में benchmark पता है मालूम ठीक है? तो हम कहीं IS के system में ये benchmark डाल नहीं सकते कि इस benchmark को जो नहीं मतलब if, if so that it just becomes automated instead of a manual. Was actually going yeah, every day yeah, and the reporting is something has been manual so far, but yeah, but, uh, yeah, there's no only reporting can be done manually. Mega. Other than that, we will have to go directly to the dashboard and we need to check on day to day basis. Yeah, and some, notification like just a red so there are multiple this. campaigns in the dashboard. Uh, mega. So each and every time, uh, we will have to go to the dashboard itself and we need to check if it is, uh, if our if the if our campaigns are um, met. The particular benchmark. The if it is not, then we will take a take and call and do it accordingly. So right, coming back to my earlier question, which I wanted to raise, like you do you have I mean, we uh, work with so many publishers. So do we do a kind of a cross check before we do this activity with them? Do we have kind of a list of OK, these publishers, we know they are OK, 
everything. I mean, there's no fraud which happens or we have done past campaigns. So there is learnings from there. Or we have to, it's like a trial and error. That ek bar dalne ke baad hi pata chalega ki whether it is, there is a, I mean, it's is it in, a, I mean, are they doing fraud or no? So only after the campaign goes live, do we get to know or do we have that kind of information prior itself? No, uh, see, uh, as per my experience, uh, like I have been working for four years. So I know, I mean, a few of the publishers are there like Cyber Media, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, so 180 watts also, uh, these are the some publishers, they do fraud uh, sometimes and we will uh, we we will sit on the top of their head and we will ask them to optimize the campaign. And also, uh, it depends on publisher to publisher as well. Like we do consider uh, Economic Times is one of the premium uh, site. But still, uh, sometimes from past two quarters, I'm seeing from both DCI perspective and the uh, CCG campaigns, uh, I'm, I do see a uh, lot of in, invalid traffic rate is happening with those sites as well. And and have observed uh, mostly in weekends, uh, they run the campaign like anything and they, do, they wanted to consume the campaign. At that point of time also, uh, whenever I'm back to office on Monday, uh, the, camp, the uh, ad fraud will go for it also. So Anu no, also na, jab campaign when we give it to a publisher, na, we also check with them that we are going to be running uh, these tags with IES. you. Are you okay with uh, IES tags with you? Are you okay with that also? And in our past experiences, honestly, it's been only four or five who have messed up uh, uh, from a viewability perspective. And uh, if you remember, there was uh, we had applied this for uh, Vpro for Ogri, if you remember as a yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, yeah. and when we did that for the first time, I think a lot of apprehension came from the client that I don't think it's going to be the right place or whatever, I mean, it's brand safe or not. Or I'm not even sure if the sites are not. Just to let you know, we while we pushed the client and told it is relevant from a Vpro audience, B2B audience perspective, the brand uh, safety was the highest on that a premium website so few only we know uh, are the ones who do not work uh cautious but mostly it turns out to be pretty much fine like even i think if i remember b transfer also did a very very good in terms of uh, we had more than 98 percent yeah. B transfer and agree as well yeah okay. okay so it's basically we i mean only after we get to know is i mean after we execute is when we get to know Otherwise, mm -hmm. kutke, sabke kutke, kuch kuch, uh, experiences, experiences, experiences huh. Huh. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. The the main thing here is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we'll have to be very straight with the publishers in uh, with uh, with this metrics. Like, uh, if we are being continuously monitoring the campaign and we are on top of their head, then they will optimize the campaign. Or else, they uh, it's just that uh, they want to consume the campaign uh, and over deliver the campaign, and they wanted to make us happy. But that, that should not be the, uh, we should not be considered that as in campaign success. Uh, if we have the good viewability, ad fraud and the brand safety, without that fraud and the brand safety, then that is considered as in campaign success. Okay. Ajay, okay. one question here. Uh, like, is there any regulatory body to overlook and curb this brand safety, I, uh, like viewability, ad fraud and all that? Sorry, come curb again? Matlab? Curb matlab? Kya matlab? Are, matlab, uh, to bring such cases down to not let that happen so that publishers are uh, like so this is basically uh, a wrongdoing right so is there any regulatory body to overlook this see uh, that is what uh, once we set up the campaign in IAS uh, we need to generate the uh, pixels and we will be sharing that pixels to implement that in the publisher uh, ad server while they're setting up the campaign. Through that only we will track the campaign in IAS. So once okay. I start seeing uh, if the uh, benchmarks are not set uh, and we uh, once we start doing the monitoring uh, the campaign on day to day basis, we will get to know and accordingly we can uh, convey the same message to the publishers and uh, get that done, get that so optimized done. Yeah, Pratik, there is no such uh, regulatory yeah. body as of, as of now. So uh, there was, okay. there is one uh, at the international level IAB, what they call, but uh, it doesn't um, restrict anything. So it will just give the guidelines of it overall how the ad should be and what the uh, format should be and things like that. But uh, there's no body which is regulating as of now. 
it's also who has to take that uh, you know yeah. conscious call and uh, make the make the tough decision for client make the optimization also side with it the publishers are also very cautious about it you know when you share this feedback with them from a viewability perspective na they take it as a big concern area and they try to solve it so uh, it, it's not that uh, they aim for something like that sometimes when a chatbot thing or a bot happen they also take it very seriously so uh, uh, then you go back to them and say ki bhai tumhara viability ka takleef hai they really work on it especially when it comes to bot and all they will uh, they will have to uh, work it work very hardly at the back end uh, to get that benchmark uh, i mean uh, to get that benchmark with, within the ad frame uh, sorry i mean uh, within the benchmark okay okay understood thank you um ajay uh, i had a question yeah, so pooja. you mentioned uh, economic times doing such uh, fraudulent you know uh, traffic kind of things so if for example if we have a campaign running on say economic times uh, do we report such incidents to the client do we keep transparency if so reported to the client you reported to the publisher first so this publisher. something that's happening uh, with our other campaign uh, i hope uh, you make sure but puja till the time you are not using the tax for your campaign there will be no way you will be able to measure that also because we do it as yeah. a practice on campaign matlab tu unko bol bhi de for example before setting up the campaign you tell them also but there is no way you will be able to uh, know exactly if it's been run properly in a branch or not till you are actually mapping it over or you are putting the tags but client ko nahi bolne ka penalties in place make up for ad fraud Uh, Amita, normally they give us inventory back and they run it properly. Uh, if, I mean, like, for example, we say that, "Bhai, itne impression ka nahi ho ra." They uh, uh, give us back that inventory, do it, run it properly, and then because we tell them that we'll not run it with you again, so they do that. Uh, us. Yeah, they, I mean, they are supposed to have run correctly in the first place, but yeah. we don't get any, uh, you know, nothing like. उटेंट so they will have to be very sure that uh, they need to set up the campaign and uh, they have to run the campaign within the benchmark itself uh, so yeah uh, to answer bhul gaya yeah. nahi to answer yeah main question hi bhul gaya ha to question hi bhul gaya wo pooch rahe the ki koi tarika hota hai make up karne ka agar wo ad fraud ho jaye yeah if they are not uh, meeting the benchmark uh, we can definitely ask for the make good and uh, we can run the uh, campaign again uh, with the as itself we can ask that we can ask that with the publishers so amita kabhi kabhi na ye unke beyond hota hai ki it has gone in an ad fraud space so which is why matlab unko gale se pakadne ki bajaye we tell them to do a make good and they do that sorry anil go ahead yeah so there are two ways which, which usually happens no one is environmental factor and one is the uh, owners of it like say example from uh, economic times and all it will mainly because of the environmental factor how we said that like and it could be because like and they may be running the ad and uh, any uh, any bad and unsa- unsafe environment like and they are news portals at the end of the day so uh, that time like the system may not be updated to handle that may not be updated to uh, you know uh, uh, not to display any ad in those in those places our ads will end up displaying so in that case we will have to uh, obviously like we both we both are responsible agency and the publisher at the same time so uh, while setting it up also like we will tell them like these are the criteria that you have to meet and they will take it very seriously when we say that like these are the ad fraud have happened and uh, bots have uh, infiltrated your website and all and they usually give them make good so but you need to prove them with the data so if you don't have whenever we say is Yeah. So we'll whenever we say IAS is mandated for the uh, brand, uh, then they will take it very seriously and they will uh, start setting up the campaign in such a way that we do get the benchmark. And uh, we have multiple publishers in uh, for Intel. Uh, they do know that uh, we do follow a lot, uh, and in client is also very aware of it. So they they do take it seriously. Isn't it a uh, mandatory thing for all clients? It's 
we, which we do for intern. No, no. It's there not, is an extra not. cost that night. No, it's not mandatory. There is a cost that you have to pay for putting the IS tax. So a lot of uh, brands do not want to take that cost. Or unko chal jata hai uske okay. But I would suggest for each and every brand, uh, whichever we do the uh, digital ad, we need to uh, do a ad verification. We need to consider the ad verification tool. Then only we will uh, get the cam actual campaign success. With just impression and clicks or the KPIs, uh, we cannot uh, consider that is the campaign success. So one more question I have. Is the publisher aware whether we have this in place or not? This tool in place? Yeah, publisher will be aware. They will be aware. Yes, yes. Uh, Ajay, you do you, yeah. two things do you want to just touch upon because Amita has a question and now I'm thinking a lot of other people would also have. How do the publishers know that they have, like we have an IS? Do you give them a tag that they get to wear that these are the viewability tags and you need to run the campaign? How, how do they know that? Like, uh, uh, this is the IAS pixel. So uh, in Intel, we have two uh, different things. One is the DCM ad server and the IAS uh, measurement uh, ad verification tool. So uh, whenever we set up the campaign, we will wrap this IAS pixel with the DCM. And I, while sending the tags or trackers with to the publishers, I will mention them clearly that this is the IAS wrapped. Uh, and uh, I once after the, uh, I mean, once we share the tags to the publishers, we, uh, we will uh, give them the benchmark so that accordingly they can set up the campaign and uh, optimize the campaign throughout the campaign duration. So these are the pixels. There are two kinds of pixels. Depending upon the publisher's platform capability, they can use these pixels uh, and to implement the campaign at their end. And this can be done through IAS dashboard itself. Yeah, so Amita, just to give you an example, if normal, you can give a landing page URL de sakte ki bhai either, uh, this is the website or the traffic where it needs to be diverted versus you are wrapping your entire website into this. So usko Thanks, ki, haan, haan. No, I'm just, I, I know what where you're coming from, which is why I'm just telling him to show it exactly because till you don't see it doesn't, uh, uh, you can't, it's difficult to visualize. Yeah. Correct. Thanks for that. Thanks, Ajay, for clarifying and Mega for understanding the problem. <laughs> yeah, Adil Siddhu, you had a question. Uh, let uh, one second, Mega. Uh, let me show you the okay, okay. tax. How the tax or trackers looks like. So this is the uh, DCM tax sheet. So uh, these are all the impression tracker, uh, which we track impressions uh, from through DCM. And this needs to be implemented at the publisher's end so that we will get the impression uh, properly. In the same way, we do, as like I said, uh, we do wrap the IAS pixels, like which starts from HTTPS pixel dot ad safe protected. These are the two pixels. Uh, one is the skeleton dot JS pixel and the GIF pixel. These are the two pixels which we wrap the uh, pixels within the DCM tracker, and we will share it the entire sheet with the publisher so that they can uh, set up the campaign. If it is not tracking, uh, post the campaign live, if the particular impressions or the, uh, I mean, from, through IES, if it is not tracking, uh, I will ask them if the IES pixels are implemented or not. If it is not done, uh, I will ask them to implement it or uh, I will ask them to pause the campaign. Uh, first of all, uh, they need to implement the pixels and then uh, they can run the campaign. So some publishers, they do uh, play a lot like uh, without implementing uh, the IAS pixels, uh, they will start the campaign, but uh, we will uh, get to know from the IAS dashboard and we will uh, ask them to set up the campaign uh, and implement the IAS pixel. You embed this in the creator? And no, the... within the tag. This okay. is the uh, pixel, uh, uh, you know, uh, for the, uh, it is for tracking purpose. It's not the serving one. In the serving, it will be embedded within that. So it's like you can different uh, clearly make out the difference, right? It, from the image source, what is starting, that is the double click, and where uh, he is uh, showing just before that script type, it is stop, uh, starting. No, so that is the IAS. This you is can clearly it, it is pasted one after another, basically. Okay, okay. This can be wrapped through IAS dashboard itself. While setting up the campaign, uh, we do uh, upload the DCM uh, generated tags, and uh, we will wrap these pixels within this tag. And the same tax will be given to the publishers. Uh, once setting up the campaign, we can track that in IAS. 
and uh, also i would like to men- uh, i forgot to mention that uh, there are two things uh, one is the monitoring tag and the blocking tag uh, in ias uh, we can share the blocking tag as well and the monitoring tag whenever we share the blocking tag to the publishers uh, if the ads are uh, like uh, if the ad like i showed you the criteria for the ad ad fraud and the brand safety if our ads are uh, getting fraud then uh, ias pixel this respective ias pixel will automatically block that particular ad and they don't serve that impression into the dcm report and uh, on monitoring it will just monitor the campaign and it will throw the number in the dashboard by while seeing the number uh, we can ask them to optimize the campaign so there are two things one is monitoring and the blocking hope it clears sanu yeah anil sikto had a question Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, in in case a brand does not want ads to be placed in some uh, sensitive content, like for example, some news related to uh, terrorism or something like that, can IAS block these across languages, uh, uh, or is it limited to only English news websites? Or no, it depends on setting up the campaign. Let me show you. Uh... so while setting up the campaign i will take that uh, it should be india itself uh, as we are doing a, uh, as we are working for india market uh, i will get the in, uh, indians uh, market template and i will start working on the campaign setup so here there are multiple criteria and i will explain you on the uh, categories as well uh, later uh, later slides so there is a uh, i can set the uh, geo limit as well uh, if i want to create if i want to run the campaign with other uh, countries also that also i can do it and and in intel we do uh, run only for the india market so i will clearly set it out uh, to run only on the india if if the publisher uh, i mean if the publisher uh, runs uh, i mean uh, if they are running outside the in, uh, india then ias will uh, flag it as uh, the brand is not safe so it's very important to monitor the campaign on day to day basis then only we will get to know if the campaign is running within the india or within the uh, brand safe categories so, so just, uh, just for your question uh, and the language to limit also adding to ajay's point one more thing anil if there is a pandemic or uh, uh, some uh, covid uh, ukraine war kind of thing we'll get a keyword list from the global team they'll mention the uh, words Uh, if they they'll give the words if those are present in the website it will automatically consider it as uh, not safe and it will block it yeah yeah so yeah, my uh, uh, actually uh, so what i wanted to know is like in this the keyword list that is yeah that is what i right? i am coming uh, from one by one so first yeah, of all sorry. i i explained on the geo part the next one is the language limit if i want to uh, run only on the english sites then i can do uh, then that also i can do uh, by setting up the campaign all it depends on how we want to uh, set the campaign through that uh, we will uh, the ias will flag if we are uh, brand safe or not so for intel we do language language limit is none because uh, we do run on english sites itself sometimes if they are running on uh, any uh, hindi website or something like that at that point of time uh, IAS should not flag it, saying it's not brand safe. So there are totally forty languages it supports. Of IAS and mode is similar in nature. The yes, yes. and the look and feel of it is similar in nature. Methodology and the functionality is same. The dashboard will be little different. Okay. And uh, like Bindu said, uh, we do have uh, different negative keywords. or like uh, we had a recently we had the ukraine and uh, uh, what is it which country is it ukraine and russia right yes ajay yeah. yes yes so uh, <laughs> i forgot that country itself 
so if we have that kind of an uh, content and uh, if our ads are running with that content uh, the ies will definitely get blocked and as uh, intel is a global client this same mandate or the same same settings will be used across the other countries as well so in the same way once the update uh, once we get an update from the global we do set up uh, while uh, we do set up this campaign in a such a way that it should not uh, our ad should not come within that content Thanks, hope Ajit. it clears any yeah thank you so uh, coming to brand safe uh, this is one of the major and important thing uh, which we have to uh, look out in is or any ad verification tool like if our ad, there are certain brand uh, brand criteria or the categories where uh, we should not run our campaign uh, with this categories like adult content all call gambling hate speech illegal download uh, drugs and sometimes in some of the news portals like uh, live mint ya hindustan uh, there there will be an offensive language or controversial or any hate speech uh, will be there at that point of time ias will flag that uh, particular ad and uh, and it will get blocked those kind of impression or the ad slots will not be get tracked in dcm or the ias Are so these, these are the standardized few categories, or are these created by you? This is the standardized in uh, categories. Uh, so, for example, wide. in alcohol, uh, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, you know, subcategories under alcohol which are created. Out of which, you have said that the red ones, which are the three, are absolute no-nos where your ad cannot happen at all. And in the yellow ones, it might be okay for your ad to happen. Am I understanding it right? Yes, yes, correct. So there is a settings here. So while there are few uh, few criteria and uh, depending upon the depending upon our brand, uh, like if we are doing any royal challenger uh, royal challengers uh, ad, so we can set that uh, risk here accordingly. The IS will track. So it depends on the brand as well. Of course, that is right. Okay, and do, can you like? Um... So, for example, you have said here how to make wine, beer, liquor. That part is defined by you, or it comes written from somewhere that guideline from IAS. So, depending upon the, uh, I mean, depending upon the brand, we will have to inform this to the uh, IAS team uh, so that uh, they can set it up in a such a way that we need to run our ads on the alcoholic content as well. At that point of time, we can change the settings here. With the low, high, whatever, uh, however we need to uh, get that uh, thing done, we can set this campaign in uh, in such a way. Okay. So it basically, it depends on the brand to brand. So as Intel is a tech client, uh, uh, tech client, we will have to be very cautious in uh, while setting up the campaign. We should not have any hate speech. Or drug-related or offensive language as well. Can there be more categories? Can we create more categories? Definitely, we will have to request to this particular uh, ad verification tool team uh, so that we can create a more categories in that. So, for example, but there this is, is the standard uh, here on religion. So there are lots of people who don't like religious associations with their brand. So can I create a topic on religion and say? That you should stay away from anything to do with religion. Yeah, that will come under hate speech itself. Okay. Okay. Shall I move on? Yes, please. So there are, uh, like I said earlier, uh, there are. Certain list of uh, blacklist and negative keywords, which we have to set it up uh, while setting up the campaign in uh, in IAS. We do set up the campaign in uh, for both the negative keywords. This is the domain exclusion list, which is a blacklist, and certain keywords which are uh, provided by the global client. Uh, in such keywords or the domain list, we should not run our campaign if the publisher or if any publisher are running on this content or the keywords that particular ad 
uh, will get blocked. How often is this refreshed by Intel? They, I keep seeing emails from them saying this is the latest new update of it. How frequently does that happen? Quarterly, Anita. Quarterly, we will get an update from the global team. Okay. Or whenever we, we have any uh, event like uh, if, I mean, uh, like Corona, yeah, war, if anything happens at that point of time, we will get an update from the global client and accordingly we will inform them. Uh, accordingly, we will inform IES team also so that we can get this implemented in the dashboard. So this is one of the example. Uh, if our ads are getting uh, served with such content, our IAS pixel will flag it and it will get blocked. That particular impressions won't be tracked in DCM or AS. And this is the IAS pixel looks like. And this is the ad, uh, industry wide benchmark for ad verification. But in Intel, uh, we do follow 62% viability and it should invalid rate, it should be within 1% and uh, brand safety should be 93% uh, itself. Any questions? Ajay, go to slide 16. One thing that you said, when you said that it will flag. Will it flag or block? I mean, how will it happen? Will IS block like, it? Or like I told you, there are, two, while uh, generating a, uh, IAS pixel, there are two things. Yeah. One is monitoring and the blocking. Yeah. So when I share the blocking tag with publishers and our ad is serving with such content, that ad will get blocked. In a yes, slot pay, the ad will not serve itself. It will it will show as a blank. Okay. That is how publisher will come back saying our ads are not serving. Please check the tag and all. When we share the monitoring trackers, it will just track uh, that the brand safe is not Papa, there or the ad fraud is happening. Sorry? Intel ke liye dono karte. Intel ke liye dono karte. And is there a separate cost for monitoring and is there a separate cost for blocking? Nothing. Same. No. For all the display, video, trackers or tags, monitoring or the blocking tags, uh, the cost remains the same, same for all the formats. But it's just that the same pay changes. Sorry, it's an extra effort to create the tag. No, no, it's just the same while setting up same. the campaign. We need to be just very up. while setting up. We need uh, depending upon the plan. We need to be make sure that what whatever what we are setting up and how it should be work. Yeah. Any questions? Nothing else which is coming to mind immediately, Ajay, but I'm sure we'll have many more questions. So definitely, I hope you I'm don't definitely. mind if we ping you and ask you a few. No, no, definitely. You can ping me anytime. Thank you so much for today. Yeah, Anyone thank you, else? Ajay. Okay, thank you, Mega. Thank you so much, Ajay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ajay. Thank you. Your feedback form, please. <laughs> thank you, Ajay. Thank you, Ajay. <laughs>